Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. I'm so excited to be guest designing for Whimsy Stamps this month. I'll be using one of their slimline paper packs. This is called Buttercup. I love the beautiful blues and yellows in this collection. There are 30 single-sided sheets, two each of 15 designs. Look at all these beautiful patterns. We have lots of florals, there's butterflies, stripes, polka dots. This collection has a lovely balance of busy designs and also those tone-on-tone -tone patterns. This is a slimline size paper pack, so the sheets are eight and a half inches by three and a half inches. I generally make American Standard A2 size cards, four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches, and you can still do that using a slimline paper pack. Let's go ahead and get started with card design number one. I'm using a card sketch from Freshly Made Sketches. This is number 95. I selected two different pattern papers and I'll layer both of those on this pretty blue cardstock. Since the pattern papers in the collection aren't big enough for the background of the card, I'll be using craft cardstock instead. When I was layering the butterfly pattern paper on the blue cardstock, I didn't get it very straight. Then when I pulled it up to readjust it, I did rip some of that blue cardstock. Luckily, you won't be able to see that once I laid that butterfly paper back down. I'll put some ATG tape on the back and adhere my card front onto a card base. Now before attaching that butterfly piece, I am putting some scrap cardstock on the left side where it goes off of that gingham floral paper. That way everything stays at the same level. For the image on the card, I'll be using this lovely tree silhouette, and this is from Whimsy Stamps Sympathy Silhouette Stamp Set, and I also have the coordinating dies. I did modify the measurements for that box since this tree is a little bit longer than what's pictured on the sketch. So this is one and three quarters by three inches. So I'm inking up the tree using some Distress Oxide ink. This is the scattered straw color. It matches beautifully with the yellow in the pattern paper. I layered the image on that same blue cardstock and I'll add that scrap cardstock piece on the very right side where it goes off of the butterfly paper. Just adhere that in place using some liquid adhesive. For the sentiment on the card, I've already stamped and cut this out using the same Sympathy Silhouette stamp and coordinating die set. This is with Sympathy. I'll add that scrap cardstock on the very left side, again just keeping everything nice and level. You could also use thin foam dimension, but I always have lots of scrap cardstock, so why not use that instead of letting it go to waste. So I'll adhere that in place using some liquid adhesive. Then a final finishing touch, I'm adding some blue gem stickers. Just putting three of them around the sentiment. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. It's always nice to have some sympathy cards on hand. You never know when you need one and they're always hard to make when you actually do need those. For card design number two, I selected this beautiful daisy floral paper for the background. I'm adding a white rectangle die cut and I used the wonky stitched rectangle die set for that. It adds this really fun stitch detail along the edge. I put some ATG tape on the back and also some liquid adhesive. I want to make sure all of those edges lay down nice and flat. Then I'll layer the floral paper on some dark teal cardstock and then again on some light blue cardstock. Put my card front onto a card base, leaving a fourth of an inch of that white card base showing. Generally, I like to leave the eighth of an inch, but I decided for this card to have that wider border. For the image on the card, I'm using the Build a Garden die set. This is so much fun. It has a birdhouse, a watering can, there's some little birds, and also the flower pot. So for this card, I'll be featuring the birdhouse, and I did cut out the main house using a lovely floral pattern paper. I used some craft cardstock for the roof and also the post, and I used some dark yellow cardstock for the opening of the birdhouse. I'll be popping this up using some foam dimension. I used some double-sided tape to hold that darker yellow circle in place for the opening of the birdhouse. I'll adhere the post for the birdhouse, and you won't see most of it, so I did trim off the very top. 
I used some liquid adhesive to adhere the post in place. I'm adding just a couple more pieces of foam dimension so there aren't any areas on the birdhouse that sag. Then I'll adhere the birdhouse on top of the pole. I'll also add one little blue bird, and I did use a black marker for the eye on the bird. For the sentiment, I've already stamped and cut this out, thinking of you. And this sentiment is part of the Sympathy Silhouette stamp set. I did put some thin foam dimension on the back. I'll remove the release paper and adhere the sentiment underneath the birdhouse. I love using Thinking of You sentiments. They're perfect for so many different card themes. So there is my finished card. And again, I did make two using this design. The Build a Garden die set is so fun. I love all the different images included, and I do use it quite a bit in this video. For card design number three, I'm using a card sketch from MFT. This is number 286. I have some craft cardstock for the background, and I decided to add a little extra detail using watercolor paint. I did a little bit of paint splattering using gold and also white paint. So I'll let that dry and start assembling the image. I'm using the same Build a Garden die set, this time the flower pot and a couple of flowers. I used two different shades of yellow for the flowers, slightly darker yellow for that larger flower, then I have a golden yellow for the centers. I'm putting some double-sided tape on the back side, then I'll flip over the flowers and inlay the centers. I'll remove the release paper and attach one of the leaves on a small yellow flower. Then I'll add just a little bit of liquid adhesive on the back, put my small yellow flower on the left side of the flower pot. The large yellow flower will go on the right side in front. I did put two small leaves behind that flower, and then the third flower will be tucked behind the other two. I will be popping up this image using some thin foam dimension. I'll make sure to add enough foam dimension so there isn't one area that sags. Then I'll set that aside and start working on the card. So now that that paint is mostly dry, I think there was one little area I noticed the white paint was still wet. I'll layer that background on some yellow cardstock, and this is the same color yellow as the small yellow flowers. Following this sketch design, I'm adding two pattern paper strips. The smaller strip features blue and white stripes, and the larger strip has some lovely yellow flowers. Just adhere both of those in place using some ATG tape. I'll put my card front onto a card base, leaving that eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. Then I'll add a white circle die cut, adhere my flower pot image on top, once that's in place, I'll add just a couple more leaves behind the flowers on the left side. I'll use some liquid adhesive and just tuck those behind that yellow flower. I'll be stamping the sentiment directly onto the card, so I am using my Mini Misty. I already have the sentiment in place in my Mini Misty, but it looks like it's not at the correct position. So I did need to go and move that sentiment up just a tiny bit. I inked it up using some black ink. I did ink up the sentiment several times to get a nice solid impression. For a final finishing touch, I'm putting a little bit of sparkle in the center of the flowers using a clear glitter brush. So there is my finished card, and I did end up making four using this design. For card design number four, I'm using a card sketch from Freshly Made Sketches. This is number 501. If you are interested in any of the sketches I use in this video, I do share all of that information on my coordinating blog post. The link is provided in the description box below, or you can simply head over to christymarcott.com. This card design is a great way to use the slimline size paper on an A2 size card without it looking like it's slimline size paper. So for the very background, I'll be featuring the yellow, white, and blue stripe paper, I have two strips that I'll adhere onto the very top and bottom, leaving that big gap in the center. I'm putting my card front onto a card base. I did add a scrap piece of cardstock in the center before adhering the next pattern paper strip. 
So there's this really wide pattern paper. On the sketch, it's two and a half inches wide. Now I'm not using a full strip. Instead, I have just some tiny pieces of the butterfly tone on tone paper. I'll adhere those small strips on the same dark teal cardstock. Since I'll be adding this large rectangle in the center, no one will know that I didn't have a full strip to go across the card. Again, in that opening, I did put some scrap cardstock. And now I'll attach this large rectangle floral pattern. I put those scrap cardstock pieces on the very top and bottom where it goes over the butterfly pattern paper. Now looking at the finished look of the card, you'd never know I used just small pattern paper scraps instead of those full panels. For the image on the card, I've already stamped and cut it out. This image is from the Sympathy Silhouette Stamp and Coordinating Die Set. I put some liquid adhesive on the back and I'm adhering it to the lower portion of this beautiful floral background paper. I did place my acrylic block on top just for some added weight while that glue dries. The sentiment is, you're totally amazing. And this is from Whimsy Stamps Simple Sentiment Strip Stamp Set. I stamped it on some yellow cardstock, cut a fishtail on the bottom, and adhered it to the card following the sketch. On the back of the sentiment at the very top, I did put some thin foam dimension just to keep it nice and level. To finish off the card, I'll add some small white gem stickers. I'm putting two of them to the right of the image and three in the upper left hand corner. I'm trying to make sure they're nice and straight. So there is my finished card and I was able to make a total of four using this sketch. I love the beautiful silhouette image. It's perfect if you don't want to do any coloring. I've used this sketch several times in the past, but I think this is the first time I put a sentiment on that banner. I usually have horizontal sentiments, but I really like how it turned out. For card design number five, I decided to make a slimline card. If I'm using a slimline paper pack, I figured I should have at least one slimline card. I'm using this beautiful yellow and blue floral paper for the background layering it on some light blue cardstock. Then I'll put ATG tape on the back of this piece and put my card front onto a card base, leaving that eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. And this is a full slimline size card, eight and a half inches by three and a half inches. For the sentiment, I'll be adding the word hello, and this is Whimsy Stamps Hello Word and Shadow die set. It has all of the individual letters for the word and also the outline piece. For the individual letters, I use some of the pattern paper. It's white and has blue polka dots. I cut out two of the outline pieces from the same cardstock. This is fun cardstock. One side is pearlescent and the other is just a solid. So I thought it would be fun to have just a peak of that pearlescent in the background. I'll glue those two pieces together. And now you can see that pearlescent drop shadow at the bottom of the sentiment. I'll be popping this up using some thin foam dimension. Make sure to get good coverage. I'll remove the release paper and adhere my sentiment more on the right side of the card. On the left side of the sentiment, I decided to add an image. I'm using the Build a Garden die set, this time with the watering can. And I did cut this out from some beautiful sparkly blue glitter paper. The watering can will have a couple of tulips. There's two different size at tulip flowers and I'll be using both of them. I glued down the stems first. And this die piece for the stems is the same that I use for the post on the birdhouse. I'll be popping up both of the tulips using the thin foam dimension. Adhere the large tulip first and overlap the smaller just slightly. Then I'll tuck in a couple of the leaves. Since I already have the foam dimension on the back of the watering can, I wasn't able to tuck that full leaf underneath, so I did trim it down. I put some liquid adhesive on the back and now I have two little leaves peeking out from the watering can. I'll also be adding a small banner in the upper right hand corner and I'm just cutting this by hand. I use the same light blue cardstock that I use for the background. I first do a small cut in the very center, 
Then I cut from the outside corner in, flip over that piece and do the same on the other side. So then I have my little banner and I glue that down using some liquid adhesive. To finish off the card, I'll add some white gem stickers. Put two in the lower right hand corner, one to the left of the sentiment and two in the upper left hand corner. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. Most of the cards I make are American Standard A2 size, probably at least 98%, but sometimes it's fun to change that up and make a slimline size card. For card design number six, I'm using Whimsy Stamps Slimline Zigzag Edger. I'll be using this middle piece. These are so fun. It adds that stitch detail in the center, but it'll also add the stitch detail on the outside. I selected the beautiful blue and yellow butterfly pattern paper, cut out four different pieces. I'm putting some double-sided tape on the back side. For the background of my card, I'll be using some craft card stock. The color works really nicely with the colors in the paper collection. These strips are wider than my card front, so I don't need to have the double-sided tape go all the way to the edge. I'll remove the release paper. And I love how these are designed that you could stack them next to each other, but I decided to have a small gap between those strips. You could see the craft cardstock. When I adhere that first strip down, I really want to make sure to get it nice and straight. If I can get that first piece down straight, then it's much easier to get the rest of them straight. So once I adhere one strip down, I'll flip over the panel, use my scissors and cut off the extra. I'll continue to do this until I have all four strips in place. When I was adhering all four of these strips, I wanted to make sure the colors of the butterfly were alternating. I have just one more piece to adhere and I'm leaving a wider gap at the top of those strips and just a small area underneath. I'll layer this piece on some blue cardstock. Then I can attach my card front onto a card base, leaving that eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. For the image on the card, I'll be using the Build a Garden die set. I have the birdhouse, a couple of the birds, and also some of the flowers. Now I don't want to adhere those images directly onto that background since it's fairly busy. So instead I'll be attaching everything onto a vellum oval. First I'll assemble my birdhouse. I have some white cardstock for that opening of the birdhouse. I'm using some white shimmer cardstock for the roof. And I will be using some foam dimension on the back of all of the images. Before I attach my oval to the card, I'll first put those images onto the oval. That way I'll know where I can add some adhesive so it won't be visible from the front of the card. For the birds, I use two shades of yellow cardstock, a little bit darker and a lighter color, and I just alternated those yellows for each of the birds. I use my black marker to add the eye. So now once I attach the birdhouse and the two birds, I can put liquid adhesive on the back side. Now you won't be able to see it from the front of the card. Before adhering the flowers and the leaves, I will stamp the sentiment directly onto that craft cardstock. I'm using my mini Misty, and this sentiment is, may all your wishes come true. It's included in the Simple Sentiment Strips stamp set. I did ink that up just a couple times to get a nice solid impression. Once I have the sentiment stamped, I can add the flower die cut pieces. I cut out the larger flower in blue and the two smaller flowers I use the darker yellow color. The very center of the flowers I have the light yellow and the center of the blue I have the opposite side of that cardstock so it has a little pearlescent finish. I put some foam dimension on the back of the flowers then I can tuck a couple of leaves underneath the two yellow flowers. Once I have all of the flowers and leaves adhered, I did lift up that oval just slightly and put some liquid adhesive underneath. That way all of the areas around that oval are adhered in place and it won't lift up. 
Then to finish off their card, I'll add some small blue gem stickers. I'll put two in the upper right hand corner and a few around the flower and birdhouse images. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. Now here's another look at the 16 cards I made using Whimsy Stamps Buttercup Slimline Paper Pack. This is a beautiful paper collection. I love the fun and cheerful colors. If you are interested in any of the products I used in this video, I do have links provided in the description box below. The Build a Garden die set is one of my favorites and I can see using that one again and again. And it's nice that you could use it year round. I think it would be really cute to make a winter themed birdhouse. I had so much fun guest designing for Whimsy Stamps this month. They have so many fun and unique products. A really wide variety of paper pads. They do have six by six size along with the slimline. And if you love making slimline size cards, they do have a very wide variety of slimline dies. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.